NHD Production Live here with producer Steven Schneider. Steven, what inspired you to get into the business? Um, for many years, I uh, was in the academic world writing about and teaching uh, on genre cinema and uh, theorizing about it. And um, I think at some sort of deeper level, always, you know, hoping and aspiring that I could uh, be sort of uh, on the side of you know people who are making the movies and not not simply thinking about them or uh, critiquing them although that's still a big part of what I'd like to think I'm doing now so I wanted to sort of cross over and be you know involved in every step of the process has it been what you expected it to be that's a very easy question to answer uh, no <laughs> uh, I don't think that I didn't even know enough when I began. I didn't even know what I didn't know. Um, and uh, no, it hasn't been what, what I expected. I think that was your question. Um, <laughs> it's been, uh, you know, one very, very long roller coaster ride. Um, and, uh, you know, I wouldn't trade any aspect of it, but it's not something that can be sort of uh, predicted, I think. Yeah, it's just totally, uh, totally unique. So. Are you still scared when you watch Paranormal Activity? Um, another good question. Um, <laughs> because a lot of people presume that since, because I focus a lot on horror films and stuff, that I may be sort of um, immune to the effects of these movies. But in fact, um, Paranormal Activity uh, still, yeah, it still works on me. Yeah, I mean, I don't tend to watch watch too many of them alone at home at this point, but um, <laughs> but but yeah, I mean, certainly the first time that I saw a rough cut of the movie, it it, it scared me more than uh, almost any other horror movie I'd ever seen, and, and it still maintains that impact on me. And it was shot in such a unique way. Um, how much input did you have with the style of the films? Um, well, uh, on the first one. Um, it was a movie that my partner at the time, Jason Blum, and I uh, sort of identified after, you know, the creator, Orrin Pelly, already made it. And so we didn't have a, a ton of, uh, of impact or influence on how, how it was shot. You know, originally, um, Orrin Pelly taught us um, a tremendous amount, actually, about the space of mock documentary and found footage cinema. And from there... Um, you know, uh, at least the way I think about it, this is a form that continues to evolve. Mm -hmm. And we were able to use um, a number of the sort of techniques that, that Orrin employed when we were making the sequels, uh, number two and three, and now number four, and some of the other movies that, I, that I've worked on at least. Um, and so, you know, some of the techniques um, were sort of handed to us in a way, and then, you know, some of them we sort of, uh, uh, helped kind of evolve and develop over time. What has been the most rewarding part of being a filmmaker? Um, do you uh, come up with the questions in advance? <laughs> They're all very good. Um, which, Maybe. <laughs> right. Um, um, wait, what was the question? <laughs> What's the most rewarding part about being a filmmaker? Oh, uh, well, first of all, it's an honor to be considered or called a filmmaker um, at all. What I do is I see my job as a, as a sort of primarily a creative producer, as someone who stands um, in back of and, and sort of in a support capacity for the real filmmakers, the writers and directors and actors. Um, but being in the game and in the conversation at all is, is a large part of the, the pleasure and joy. So I think, again, I mm -hmm. forgot what you asked. No, that's great. And you started out sort of in an academic sense. Do you still find yourself critiquing films in the same way that you would have years ago? No, because uh, I forgot everything. I mean, <laughs> uh, I was in, in grad school for far too many years collecting financial aid, so I didn't have to uh, you know, get, get a real job. Um, and I have to say that I've, I've really lost um, my, my, I guess now, long-term memory. I, I, I hope that I've kept some of the sort of analytic, you know, skill that I, that hopefully I developed at the time. But um, no, I mean, my experience watching movies now 
it's uh, on the one hand more uh, innocent than it was when I was in academia because I'm less sort of hopefully less pretentious about the whole thing. Um, and on the other hand, I'm more jaded and more cynical because being on the sort of um, you know physical producing side of things, um, you know I know how hard every aspect of it is and and. You know, there are a lot of frustrations with the Hollywood machine that uh, we all have to live with. Um, and so yeah, I'm just different now. Yeah. What are your goals for the future? My goals for the future? Do you mean uh, personally or professionally? Maybe both. Yeah. I'm balancing those two it's things. It's all the same. It's all the same. Mm -hmm. um, it's all connected. My goals um, for the future. And did you say long term or short term? Um, long term. I'm putting the pressure on. Yeah. <laughs> um, now my goals are, you know, I'm I've found a profession that I love, and I feel very grateful for that. And there's a little little child running around. <laughs> um, uh, and so now the, the the main goal is to sort of be the best producer that I can, so that I can sustain my career over a long period of time, which. Um, isn't as easy as it sounds out here. You know, one has to try and stay relevant and conduct one's business in the right way. And you know, I've had a lot to learn and enjoy. Again, even the the difficult aspects of it are really interesting for me. But I just want to be um, doing more of what I'm doing now with the increased confidence and you know opportunity. What advice would you give to an aspiring producer? Don't don't get into producing. For the money, um, there's plenty of it to be had in success, I suppose. Um, and I wouldn't say that I've achieved anywhere near, you know, the heights of of, of what the business offers financially. But uh, simply put, um, if you're driven by the need or the desire to make money in the short term. Um, producing isn't the right gig because the way the machine is operating now, the Hollywood structure at least, um, and even independent filmmaking, um, producers tend to get paid last, mm -hmm. um, you know, even in success. And, and therefore, um, if you can find other reasons to be excited about, uh, about producing um, and let the financial rewards sort of be icing on the cake, mm -hmm. which is hard for most of us, of course, we have to eat, but if you can, if you can not be not focused on the money, you have a good chance if, if you're too worried about uh, instant reward, and when I say instant, I mean, you know, getting paid in the first decade of being out here, mm -hmm. uh, then, then it's probably not for you. So. And we can find your work on IMDb. Are you on Twitter? Is there somewhere else we can find you online? Um, um, are you uh, you're asking for my for, for my for my number? Oh yeah. <laughs> um, you already had my number. Um, I'm not I'm not on Twitter. Uh, and uh, I am on IMDb, and I think that um, I'm definitely on email all the time, and um, I have a bunch of stuff that I you know that I published um, in the genre space, so people can get familiar with some of the things that that inspire me. Great, we'll check that out. Well, thank you so much, Stephen, and best of luck with all your